Hi, this is Father Louis Skirty with Friends of the Word. Today my guest is Howard Jost here in North Haldon, New Jersey. I'm the chaplain here at the municipal building, uh, and we're in the mayor's office. He's not with us today, but we're in the mayor's office. And Howard and I know each other from the North Haldon Alliance, which is a drug and alcohol prevention program. But in our conversation, I've gotten to know other interesting tidbits about Howard and your work with relief services. Thank Pleasure you. to be here. Thank, Thank you, for you for being my me. guest today. Oh, yes, it's I'm wonderful. Glad now, to be here. Um, you've you've served in in, in Asia mostly I have, in your relief yes, services. Yes, right. Okay, for, tell our audience what relief services is all about. Well, it's it's relief and development. Is right. what it is. Um, I've worked for Church World Service, which is a Protestant relief and development agency. So we have offices around the world. We raise money in the U.S. and we provide help to uh, poor communities all around the world. Mm. I served in Bangladesh as well as in Cambodia and India. Um, when there are disasters, we raise special funds and we do disaster response. Uh, mm. In the times when, between disasters, we are doing an ongoing community development program. Great. All right, uh, and it has varied. You know, for, it depends on what has what the situation is or what we do. Right. All right. right, right. So if we want to talk about, for example, in India in 2001, there was a huge earthquake in Gujarat, all right? So um, people raised, contributions came in from all around the world. It's a little bit like hurricanes and earthquakes sure, elsewhere, right? People sure, contribute, sure. they're very generous. Yeah. And it's our job then to use those funds in a fitting way, in a uh, efficient right, way. Yes. So in Gujarat, people's houses all fell down, and so we rebuilt uh, over 600 houses uh, for people whole villages were reconstructed. What, specifically, what is your role? Do you do the banging or do you I, do yeah, the no, I don't, I don't do the banging. <laughs> um, uh, that, it's interesting that the situation has changed. Uh, I first started uh, working in East Pakistan in 1966. Mm. I worked in Cambodia and India at the end of my career in 2000, mm -hmm. 2001, like that. At the beginning, we foreigners expatriates were sure, doing most sure. of the work themselves okay. with a little bit of help of local people. By the time I finished my career, I was, for example, the only expatriate in the India program. Mm, all right, And all the great. work was being done by local people. Excellent. Right? So this is a movement toward what we call self-reliance yes. and sustainability. Uh, self-reliance and sustainability are sort of the, here's a one of the things we said was cultivating self-reliance. Excellent, all right? excellent, right. One of the reasons we talk about cultivating, because it's like planting a seed. It doesn't always grow, right? Right. It's not manufacturing. You don't have a, uh, what should we say, uh, a, a process, switch, yeah, a right. process that you can apply irrespective of what's going on. It's exactly. not like raw material. You say, all right, now we put it here and we do these things and boom, out comes self-reliance. Right. No, you have to work with people. You have to respond to their needs, and the situation has to be adaptable. And, and adapt to their culture. Their culture which and is to really their needs, yes. Significant. And that's why we use local people. Yes. For example, in India, I was the only expatriate in the organization, right? Mm -hmm. We had over 300 people working all around the country. And these people were hired. Yeah, in, yeah we paid for them. Indian, na that's right. natives, yeah, hired. Did. Now, Great. the money came from outside. Yes. The next step in self-reliance is that they should be able to raise the money from within the country. Mm, All right? Mm, right? That's the last step, and that's the hardest one, because yes. people in India, for example, or Cambodia, Cambodia doesn't have much money. Mm. India is now developing, but it has, um, huh, it doesn't have a, a very big tradition of the kind of contributions that we have here. Right. So right, people right. give money. It's a part of the tradition, but generally they don't do it through an organization. Mm. If you go to India or uh, Bangladesh or other countries, you'll see that people basically give to individuals. If you're on the street and there are beggars yes, or there are yes. people who are handicapped, you see them on the bus or on right. the tram, you give money that way. Okay, then that's that's very Hindu, too. That's right, and Muslim. Very, and Muslim, and Muslim very, very right, yeah. associated with their, that's their right. faith and their upbringing. That's right, but this idea of sending a check to an organization to carry out a, a you know good works, that's that still has to develop. Interesting. Yeah. And, and also, too, um, I was in India recently, uh, there were so many states and for so many centuries, th they were really divorced from each other, separated from they each were, other. Yeah. So to and act, fighting each other. And fighting each <laughs> other, of course. And so so to act holistically, yeah. is, is, it's relatively new. 
No, the British, the British were the ones who made India into a, a unified state. Yes, yes. The Muslims had started that process earlier, but then the, Hin the, in the uh, British are the ones who finished it. Right, right, right. And then, of course, it, in 1947, it became an independent country. So, uh, I, th w one of the stories that one of the guys was telling us about the number of um, maharajas throughout yeah. throughout the yeah. country. And one morning, uh, I guess it was Indira Gandhi called them up and said, uh, "We're going to all have a meeting here in yeah. in Bombay or whatever the capital was at that point." Um, and she said, "Now you, none of you are any longer kings yeah. in your areas. It's united." Yeah. And like that, that blew their minds. But but that's interesting. I mean, for us to hear that, that's yeah. fascinating. Well, one of the ways in which they got those Maharajas to participate in the unified country was they gave them privy purses, right? The state, instead of them being allowed to tax their own people right. and get the money that way, the central government gave them money, which then was gradually tapered off. Yes, yes, okay. yes, yes. So. And it was funny, cause I, not to overdo this, but uh, the guide was also telling us that some of the Maharajas, depending on what their family was like and their, their intelligence and yeah. their planning, some of them were left with nothing. Yeah. Some were left with their, their, their palace, yeah. which many of them turned into partially hotels or, or, or mm -hmm. celebration venues. Yeah. And some of them were really entrepreneurial and they're oh, yeah. running high. So, oh, yeah. again, that's people. Yeah. So, okay, let's get back to relief. So, did you, you had to come into contact with many, many levels of people. Yeah. The casts are yeah. very important That's there. right, yeah. Um, well, one of the things I wanted to say about working with in both uh, Cambodia as well as India and earlier in Bangladesh was that uh, we had a very good cooperation between people from different religious backgrounds. Great. All right? I mean, Church World Service is a Christian Protestant organization. Lutheran World Service is the same way. Uh, but the We have Catholic we, Relief Service. And you have a Catholic yes. Relief Service, that's yes. right. Um, and they were also active in all of the places where I was, right, So, right, and we right. cooperated with them as well. But the staff that we had were the people of the country. So That's in great. Bangladesh, their majority are Muslims, mm. right, along with some Christians. In Cambodia, they're all Buddhists, essentially. Uh, and then, of course, in India, we had the mixture, yes. not Buddhists, but we had Hindus and Muslims and Christians all working together. That's and great. I think one of the things that I feel very positive about uh, is the ability of people like that to work together, even though it's Christian money in an organization that has its base outside, but for the good of the country, everybody's working together. That's great. That's and great. Uh, that sets an example, I think, for ways in which people of different faiths can work together efficiently, effectively, and without uh, the problems that are raised if you you know, if you focus on your differences rather than on your similarities. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And and we as Christians have that as our obligation. We don't look to serve just Christians or just Catholics or just Lutherans. No, that's right. Well, our, our mission is to serve the poor, whoever yeah, they are. That's right. And and raise the dignity and, and realize the dignity of yeah. every person. Yeah. And his or her religious values are yeah. to be respected. Uh, a good example of how that affects our work. Uh, we worked in Assam, which is on the north side of Bangladesh. Uh, and there had been some uh, communal riots between different groups of people. Mm, we went in to mm. try to um, help with rebuilding after that. Uh, a very high incidence of Muslims in the area, especially those coming illegally from Bangladesh into Assam. Uh, we had Muslims on our staff who were working in that area. The local Muslims were very much unhappy with them. All mm. right? And so they were the ones that faced the biggest brunt. They were called traitors and uh, oh, that you have a false face. These uh, Christians are really not here to help us. You, it looks like it, and if you get involved with them, uh, eventually you will all be converted, even if they say this is not the case. In those cases, we couldn't work. So then we said, well, but there are lots of other places where the need is just as great. Right. So if you don't want us to work here, we'll come. We'll go to the next village and the next one and the next one until we find people who are willing to work with us. That's and so that's how we were able yeah. to function. It's, it's, that's so heartbreaking. Yeah. I mean, when, when religion gets in the way of really taking care of needs of yeah, people. They, I mean, that's, that's well, they did say that there was one good thing. They said that the Saudis and the other Muslim countries had never paid them any attention until the, until the Lutherans came. And once we were there, all of a sudden it turns out that the, the Saudis had a lot of interest. Unfortunately, uh -huh. the money they gave was only allowed to be used for building mosques. 
It wasn't community development right, money. It right, wasn't right, relief money. Right, it was for building right. mosques. That's but anyway, true. they didn't ever have that before either. So, yeah, so, so there something. was some benefit. <laughs> okay, Howard, I'm going to have you back again. Would you okay. be interested? And yeah. maybe some specific projects sure. be besides. Yeah, I'm happy to do that. Because it really, really is important that, that our audience knows uh, about mission and, and service throughout the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, from a Catholic perspective, we're not the only ones serving as, right. as, as our Catholics do now. Yeah. Thank you, Howard. You're welcome. This has been Father Louis Skirty with Howard Jost, speaking about mission throughout the world and relief and development. And we're going to come back in, at another future show and talk more about some of the specific projects that Howard has been involved in. Thank you. Let me hear from you. Father Lou Skirty at Hotmail.com and all your questions and comments will be answered. And if you send a question in and I read it on the air and answer it, you'll get a prize. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>